Thank you. So continuing on our ESP32 theme today, we have Andy who is going to talk about ESP32 development using IOTAS. Thanks, Andy. Well, well, thanks everyone for coming. I hope you enjoyed uh, building your hardware as much as we uh, enjoyed developing it and uh, hassling each other about all the, the challenges of getting it done on time. Um, one, one thing we really wanted to do this year was uh, uh, give everyone a chance to um, learn a bit more about the uh, hardware and the software and to be able to learn a bit about programming it and that's uh, hopefully what I'll finish off here today. Um, so the key I think is just as Mark has uh, already mentioned is to start simple, uh, discover a bit about the development environment, discover a bit about your hardware, find out what libraries will support that hardware, um, diagnose some problems and just keep uh, iterating until it gets more and more sophisticated. Um, so the, for the IOTAS firmware, we've actually, that's gone through a few iterations now and supports uh, at least half the hardware. So you've got a good kitchen sink of software to sort of um, base your own efforts on. Um, so why dive deep into Python? And the great thing about organising a schedule, I could come after the MicroPython guy and give him a heart and hassle him. No, these, it's, it's going to be great when um, high level languages run on the ESP32. It's much faster. Uh, uh, edit, compile, or it's not a compile, it's just an edit um, and uh, run cycle. Uh, it lowers the barrier to entry, which is fantastic. More diversity, more kids, more, in, more engineers doing crazy things with robots. Gives you high level abstractions so you, you can code faster. It's just, it's just all around good. But um, when you get into embedded computing, it's really all about interacting with the physical world, play, playing with the hardware. And, uh, and uh, to dive deep and play with registers and, and buses and stuff like that, you just you know, sometimes you need to get, get your hands dirty. Uh, and also, you've got to deal with constraints and limited resources. And uh, the uh, ESP32 gives us um, a half a meg of RAM, which is uh, considerable. You can almost fit a tenth of a photo in that. And um, when it's compressed. Um, and uh, uh, time. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're starting to deal with uh, real-time control systems, um, maybe not a fighter jet pilot, um, you may only have uh, microseconds or tens of microseconds to respond and even high level languages will have trouble um, dealing with those constraints. And uh, once you start to do some interesting things like with wearables or other, I would say to start doing home automation and power sources aren't always available or it's agriculture out in the fields, um, you know, power consumption is pretty, pretty critical. And uh, when the processes are just ticking along, uh, normally you might consume um, you know, 10 milliamps, give or take, maybe a bit more. Um, and, uh, but when you turn, when uh, the radio is transmitting, it might be up to uh, 200 milliamps in bursts. So you know, it really uh, hurts your battery a lot. And uh, so there's lots of things like that that you really want to um, uh, use C for, especially this ultra low power processor in the ESP32. I, I doubt that'll be running um, uh, you know, C sharp or uh, Haskell anytime soon. And also, um, C still powers a lot of the world, our, our, our operating systems. Um, under, uh, when I, whenever I do a pip install or a Node.js thing, it seems a lot of C compilation is still going on. So anyway, so a lot of people claim they're a full stack developer, but um, I know if you're not sort of messing with hardware, right up to playing with um, neural networks and AI, I think um, if you're falling a bit short. But seriously, um, when you work on, um, on uh, embedded platforms, you have to uh, understand the hardware, you know a little bit about how the, the, your, your firmware gets loaded into the machine, uh, a little bit about the, uh, how do you drive the hardware, how do you, how do you make that I.O. extender on the I.O. TUS board turn the backlight on so you can actually see the pixels. Um, uh, the, op the operating system has lots of calls around uh, uh, modulizing your work into tasks, uh, using cues and semaphores to um, send information between those tasks. Uh, when a, when a button gets pushed, you want to have a, an interrupt handler to respond to that very quickly, and you want, don't want that interrupt handler taking much time. Um, pass it on to something, a task to get the job done. And, and, so, and so it goes. You can read as well as I can. Um, there's you know, network stacks, there's software libraries. There's, there's a lot to, lot to learn, and a lot of that's in, in C. Uh, so for when you come from the, the Arduino environment, there's not a lot of operating system there. There's a, 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 a some libraries that help, uh, that are quite helpful, and it's it's bare metal. But there's not really much of a concept of tasks, and uh, and uh, and more sophisticated memory management. And once you start um, playing with a machine that's got um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and uh, you might start making um, sending JSON over um, HTTP, uh, and uh, that's going to take some time, and you need to serve some interrupts. You need you really want to have a bit of an operating system underneath you <coughs> managing those resources. And uh, so free RTOS has been chosen by, by Expressive and it's been around for, I don't know, maybe a dozen years and it's used by thousands, I think thousands of companies on lots of different platforms. So it's pretty well known. And it's, um, and it's fairly, uh, as um, I think Angus mentioned, it's, it's fairly portable across uh, different hardware. Um, 
but when you look at the uh, when you go to the website and look at their quick start guide, you know, when you actually have to get this operating system onto a piece of hardware, it's not that quick. You know, it's not as quick as pulling down a high level language and just you know just running it. And when you look at the uh, the reference guide, it's 400 pages, so it's a lot to wade through. And uh, and so I, uh, I think it was Mark found um, FreeRTOS Sim, uh, which runs on Mac and Linux, and uh, that allows you to um, it's a copy of FreeRTOS that just runs on the desktop, and it allows you to um, read a bit of documentation and play with some of the concepts um, beforehand, before, before having to make the, run it for real on the hardware. So it's, not, it's called a simulator, but it's not really a simulator, it is actually free RTOS with just a, a port for the, um, the, uh, tasks, the queues and the tasks to run on, on your desktop. Um, so that's, so you just basically git clone the library, um, CD down to the build direct, uh, make build directory, use, use the infamous CMake, go make and then you've, you've, your application is running. So one of the things to learn about uh, FreeRTOS is it has a bit of an unusual uh, directory structure, and uh, FreeRTOS Sim has this directory structure where your application is uh, in one one uh, directory called Project. Uh, the, the the RTOS source is uh, essentially in something called Source, and you and there's demonstration code and something demo. It's a bit bit weird, and uh, and the same thing with the uh, ESP32. You'll find there's a, another sort of structure structure that, that's used there. So it, it takes, takes a bit to uh, just get head around. Um, what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you that working. So let's see if I can have some success here. So I've checked out um, uh, the IOTAR's ESP32 uh, firmware direct, uh, repository, and you'll notice um, about I don't know six, six line down ESP IDF. So that's uh, that's basically free RTOS ported to the uh, ESP32. And if you zip into that uh, directory, you'll see a bit of the, bit of the, um, the structure there. So it's components and documentation, but what I care about is the examples. And you'll see there's a, uh, I don't know, a couple dozen examples there, starting off with the infamous Hello World um, and Blink and so on. Well, I'm not too sure. Oh, we actually, we were t t discussing this uh, recently about what would you blink on the uh, IOTAS, and I think the thing you can blink is the LCD backlight. So <laughs> we don't actually have um, a, pin th a pin 13 LED on the board. Maybe we should. But you can see there's quite a, good, a lot of good examples there. So. Um, I was using number 20, the, uh, the UART example with our days to figure out how to um, get serial input on, on this machine. Um, another popular one we were using was, um, uh, I think it was number three, or uh, one of the HTTP ones when we were just testing, testing Wi-Fi. So what you can do is you can just uh, CD into that directory. Um, actually, I've gone off, of course, yeah, I'm, actually, I've actually, sorry, I'm actually doing free RTOS for the ESP32. I, actually should have, um, I was meant to be showing you um, uh, the simulator, sorry. I'll just get back on track. Here we go. This one show first. So free RTOS sim. So CD into there. CD into build. You would just type a CMake. Oh, I've already done that, sorry. CMake uh, dot dot. Type make. And you've now got a binary which you can now, you can now run. So all, that, all that's just doing is that's just a simple um, timer example. And you can just uh, look, uh, go into, um, oh, where is it? In uh, project. And you put, um, look at main.c. And uh, actually, I'll give you the I'll give you the cut down version, main.c.skeleton. And so you can see in there, um, there's a, some include files for free RTOS. There's a main a main method which has a, a x task create. And uh, one of Angus's favourite things about um, free RTOS is their Hungarian um, style uh, function names. Um, so the x and uh, I think the x indicates the return value, and there's p and v and stuff like that. But see, it's a task create, and that's exactly the same X task create function they use on the uh, on the ESP32. Just it starts the scheduler. Um, a task is a task, and uh, it's basically it's got a, a, a CPU tick. Uh, that's, that's basically saying um, 2.5 seconds uh, a tick, and then um, we're saying we're, we're setting the wake up time, and then we're just looping around, just delaying the task for for 2.5 seconds and printing out uh, a, a counter. So that's um, so the code you would write the SP32 to do of tasks would be synonymous to that. So it's, so it's just a, a quick and easy way to learn a bit about free RTOS. So I'll just go back to um, back to here. IOTAS uh, firmware. Right. So that's so that's if you just um, want to play a bit on the directory. Where's my where's my presentation gone? That's interesting. It's just it's vanished. There it is. Cool. Okay, so that's the, that's the simulator. All right. So 
to get to get going, uh, it's often easiest just to uh, grab some code from someone else. Um, so I just showed you before the uh, ESP IDF examples. There's a couple dozen there to play with, and I'd, I'll show you the Hello World one in a sec. And uh, the other is the uh, Arduino IDE. There's um, plenty of good um, examples there. And as, as Mark uh, mentioned earlier, what, we, what, what he did was he looked at the Arduino IDE first to see if we could get the IO expander going, um, the accelerometer, the, the, the barometer, um, uh, and also the uh, LCD screen. Bob used that for um, just, just to test that the screen was actually working, just straight from the Arduino IDE. And you're able to take, uh, take that code, uh, port that code across as Mark described. So, um, so basically, to get Hello World going on, uh, on the, on, uh, on the IOTAS, you uh, uh, basically just need to know what your serial port is. So it's um, slab, which is just, um, is, that the C, is that the CP2102 uh, USB serial converter, I think, from memory? Anyone? Uh, uh, CD down to the examples. Uh, so make, make menu config. This, uh, this has been borrowed from the, uh, the Linux kernel, I believe. Is that right, Mark? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, so basically, that allows you to um, <laughs> uh, allows the uh, in free RTOS and also in your application to expose parameters, uh, which you know, then can be very easily changed from from your, your console. Um, and those parameters are used by Make, so you can say, do do you want Wi-Fi or not? And if you do, what should the SSID and uh, uh, network password be? Um, you can change the the board rate, which um, Angus mentioned, and we highly you know, highly recommend that because. Um, uh, the default was uh, 115, 200, and if you go, I think it's nearly nearly a, a megabit. That's you know eight times faster, which is uh, saves you time when when flashing. There's a, there's a lot of parameters in there. So after that, you just you just do a make, and then you do a make flash to get um, to get the uh, firmware on your machine. And then uh, mini term is a, a popular way to um, to uh, look at the uh, the uh, serial console output of your machine. And uh, uh, the other way of doing that is just to say make make monitor. So I I, I, I was using the raw command line before make monitor went into the um, into the uh, expressive uh, IDF. So now I'll just to uh, get over here and get across the terminal. Right. So I can just so so if you uh, clone the uh, IOTAS uh, ESP firmware directory, you get the uh, IDF for free. Um, so just going to examples, going to hello world, and so I can just do make menu. Oh, actually, let's, let's have a quick look at um, the main the main code whilst we're here. So just going to main. Uh, what's it called? Hello World, here it is. Um, so you can see at the top it says uh, includes free RTOS, just like the um, desktop simulation version. Uh, there's a task called Hello Task, and if you look down in, down in the main code, we're doing uh, the X task create, which is, um, causes that task to run at the same time as the main task will complete and exit. Oh, just while I think of it, um, in free RTOS, your task should never, except for the main the main method, your task should never exit, so they should always just be sitting in a while loop doing doing some work, on, and, you, and you can kill them off if you want. So always make sure your tasks loop, uh, and you can see that that, ta that task is um, is uh, every so often it's um, uh, basically uh, print counting down from a, a number, and then it goes basically goes and restart basically restarts the, the CPU, so ESP restart. So what we'll expect to see is um, is the program will say hello world, count down, restart the restart the hardware. The other thing you'll see uh, in the in that main in each directory is um, what's called this component file. So if you're creating a source directory, you'll just fill that component file in with some. Um, uh, it's, it's just basically C flags, so you include files and other things you need. Uh, in this case, nothing was required, so that's pretty simple. So let's see if we can build this and uh, see what happens. So I'll just go make a new config. Hopefully, I'll fit in the screen. So um, so you can see you can just go in and change. Oh, Python and that's do you sneak in and mess with my uh, mess with my uh, example, there, Nick? Um, so it's probably do the tool chain. Um, there's nothing particularly interesting here. Oh, so component config. That's usually um, where we'll go to change things. So you can enable, that's where we can enable Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, so do not turn that off. You won't believe the fun games we had over that over the last uh, couple of days, where it was that we found it was being turned off on us when we weren't really paying attention and wondering why the Wi-Fi wasn't working. Yeah. Uh, we are experienced professionals, trust us. Okay, so now I can just go make, and that, and I've already made it, so let's just do a make clean. And what you'll find uh, is uh, when we do a make, sorry, it's actually going to compile the whole of free RTOS. So it's compiling all of the operating system, um, it, as well as your application. So you can see it's doing our co-app, which is a, um, a popular um, library for um, interacting with IoT devices, if you 
if you're interested in that, um, there's, there's the API, IPv4 and IPv6. So it's kind of instructive to look at this uh, and see what sort of things are going. There's a bit of crypto, um, more crypto, SSL, X509 certificates, quite fun. A smaller HTTP library, uh, more SSL, more crypto, um, and then it's done. And uh, now we can just go make Flash, turn my, I'll turn my uh, IOTUS on. Uh, so let's flash it. So it's, it's using an ESP tool, just like a, probably a different ver a version of it from the ESP8266, and that's that's done. So that's um, that's now running. So how do, so now the trick is how do, how can we see what's going on? So if we go and make monitor, that's just actually I'll just actually I'll just do mini term because that's what that's what I do. Right. So you can see uh, counting down. It's about to uh, call ESP start and reboot. Not as exciting as a NASA launch, but hopefully. There we go. So that's, 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 that's your ESP32 booting. And you can see there, it just very quickly said hello world before it boots again. So um, there you go. Now, uh, one of the things that we found quite helpful is if you type Control T and Control R, hang on, what happened there? It actually stopped. It crashed. I can't imagine. This is it. Welcome, welcome to Mark's world. <laughs> um, Anyway, so I'll just, I'm just going to just go Control T, Control R. So that's um, raised RTS, and then go Control T, Control R again. And that I actually forced that that reboot using Control T, Control R, which is much nicer than turning off all the time. And you just go Control Backspace to get out. So that's Hello World for the uh, ESP32, and uh, that, and that and particularly the IOTUS. So what else? How are we going for time? Okay. Oh, heaps. Okay, so after you've um, started to um, uh, grab some, some code from some examples and get it working, what you need to do is then start looking at your hardware. So you might identify the parts and find out there's a, uh, the ILI uh, 9341, which is a very popular uh, LCD uh, screen. It's a um, 320 by 240 uh, um, color touch screen with that's um, controlled over at the SPI bus. Uh, we have a, an IO expander that's uh, controlled through I2C and that's got some GPI buttons. We basically, uh, that, uh, Everyone, everyone was so keen to throw hardware onto this machine, we ran out, they ran out of our I.O. pins on the ESP32. And so use an I.O. expander to get some more GPO pins for, for um, the buttons and, and so on. And one of, the, one of those pins turns on the LCD backlight. So you'll see in the I.O. does code that that's done somewhere. Once you've, looked, once you've identified your parts, you look at the, um, the, the uh, data sheets and uh, also circuit diagrams to sort of figure out how, uh, look at how these, these devices work. And then also check out what the I.O. pins are. So for the... LCD touch screen, there's, uh, we use SPI, and so there's a, a chip select to um, talk to the touch screen. There's also a chip select for, sorry, there's a chip select for the uh, display, there's a chip select for the touch screen, also a chip select for the SD card. So you need to raise that uh, select to get to the right device. And um, SPI uses a, a clock, uh, master out, uh, slave in, and ma master in, slave out line. So it's a four, four wire protocol, and they're the IO pin numbers. And so if you look, go to the IOTUS uh, ESP32 hardware, Repository. All the um, all the uh, KiCad uh, uh, schematics are there, and uh, I've just clipped a little bit out, which shows you on the left-hand side. That's the uh, uh, the LCD touchscreen, so you can see the I the I pin numbers are on the on the outside, and the uh, the pin functions are in the inside the box. And so I can say, okay, that's how that, that that's how that um, component is used. And you can see just down the bottom, the I the I/O expander has got BL control for backlight control. And on the right-hand side, that's actually the I2C IO expander. So you can see the pins that are, are used for the uh, clock and data. That's SCL and SDA. And also, on the, and on the right-hand side of the IO expander, we can see what all the uh, GPO pins are. So there's an interrupt from the accelerometer. There's the, uh, the A and B button, which are these two tall buttons here. So um, unless you paid extra for the short ones. Uh, so you can, get, you can read those pins. There's the uh, ink button, uh, if that's the rotary encoder button. So you push that. Um, there's the S SD card select and some touch from the touchscreen, then the a uh, P7, which is the most significant bit, that's the backlight control. So to, to, to turn the backlight on the IOTAS, you would actually have to talk to the IO expander over I2C and tell it to uh, flip, that, flip that bit. Fortunately, there's a, uh, an Arduino library that does that for you, and that's uh, what Mark used to um, get that, that uh, backlight on. So, uh, so once you sort of have a bit of understanding what, what your hardware is available and how it works, you can then go and grab firmware libraries. So to make this um, LCD screen work, we just can use the uh, Adafruit GFX libraries and the uh, low-level uh, 93441 library, which is, um, you know, gets used a lot. 
And there, that's, a, that, that's some examples of some of the C functions you can call. So if you can fill the screen, draw lines, draw circles and rectangles and all that sort of stuff. So the, the, the display does not go very fast. So you're not going to get you know, 30 frames of, um, per second of beautiful graphics. Um, it's over SPI. And right now, sort of a, a full screen probably takes, you can, you can watch it wipe across the screen. Um, so you, you need to um, work a bit to um, do like a little interactive graphics game. So it gives you firmware libraries. And um, in the, in the IOTAS firmware example that we've got at the moment, uh, it's a bit of a kitchen sink that acts, uh, shows you how to interact with most of the hardware. So that's the list of what's working. So we can um, you know, get Wi-Fi going and publish um, messages over MQTT, which will come in handy in um, uh, Alistair's uh, Home Automation MQTT talk Wednesday. So you know, have a, might try and see if you can publish using the IOTAS to whatever Alistair has in store for you. Um, the buttons and rotary encoder work. The I, some of the I2C peripherals work. Uh, things that don't work yet are uh, the joystick button, so that doesn't work yet. Um, infrared, uh, touch panel, Bluetooth, those sort of things. Audio, to, to Bob's dismay. But um, I bet if everyone, if we all work together, we'll perhaps get some of that going over the next uh, few days and a few weeks. All right, so I'm going to show a very crude demonstration. Like, um, Mark, just avert your eyes when I show the code. So I just, I just, I just um, so the IOTAS uh, examples have been broken into tasks. So there's, um, Tasks that um, monitor the very, the very sensors, input, input sensors. They uh, send that information over queues to a task that um, publishes MQT messages. Yep, five minutes. And then um, there's, there's going to be another task to manage the screen. And I've just basically ignored all that and just hacked right into it. So let's, let's get into it. Um, but what I wanted to show you is, is how, how, e how easy it is for you to get your IOTAS to do something, I hope. All right, so the first um, nasty hack I did, actually, I can just get into main. So this is, this is the top level of the, the repo. So just zip into main, just go git status star. So OK, I messed with um, joystick and main. So let's see what I did. So, so in main, oh, let's go to main first. So in main and joystick. Um, so what I did was I just uh, made a reference to IOTAS graphics. So we just know what functions can be called. And if we go probably to something like fill, is it fill or draw uh, buttons maybe? Maybe a state. Here we go. So Mark has got some nice code that's uh, uh, when, when, the, when the send button task is uh, sitting around, it's just, it's just looping, it's waiting for a queue just to be told about the buttons. And if a button comes in, uh, publish it to MQDT. I just got in there and said, hey, if it's, um, if it's button A has been pressed and uh, it's, it's down, then just call iographics clear. So, um, so basically when you press your, um, your uh, uh, button A, push it down, the screen should clear. So that was the first little hack. And then the second little hack was, um, uh, if I go to uh, draw, I think it is. So this is in the, draw st uh, the joystick code. So once again, Mark is, uh, um, oh, here, it looks a, bit, look, looks a little bit like a Arduino here. So pin mode, joystick pin X is input. We're sitting in a while loop. Um, and then uh, here Mark's doing an, an uh, analog read of the uh, X and Y axis. So once again, looks like Arduino code. And if, that, if it changes, um, he will uh, very nicely uh, uh, make sure that um, we're not um, flooding the queue with, um, with myriad, myriad of messages. And if, if so, if there's a doll to change, then send that queue off, send that off on a queue. I've just gone straight in there and hacked in and just said basically every time, every time you see the joystick uh, sort of kind of move, just draw a line. So, um, so that's, that's that, that bit. And then if we go down now, so that's a, that's in, so in the main in the main method, you can uh, sorry in the main. Uh, directory, you can see there's things for the IO extender, joystick, rotary encoder, sensors, Wi-Fi. You can sort of wander through there and, and check it out. Um, but if you go across uh, back the upper directory, there's what's called components. So this is where you can um, bring in all, lots of components. So there's the accelerometer code. There's, um, there's, uh, that's, that, that's the bit for the Arduino compatibility, um, the IO extender. So I've just got, uh, gone into the LCD. So you can see that's where the uh, Adafruit uh, libraries are. And this is where the component.make file is a little bit more involved in, my, in the Hello World example. It's basically got, so where do you get your includes and that sort of stuff. And if we go into the IOTAS, um, basically uh, uh, CPP, uh, better, better speed up here. So this uh, doesn't look too different from Arduino code. You're basically um, getting the Adafruit LCD, and then I've just got a couple of functions for initializing the graphics. Um, oh, here, what we've done is we've pinned, we've pinned a, a task to, to a particular core. We were having problems when, um, is running on core zero, um, and you can see if I'm doing a clear, just doing a full screen. So let's just, let's just see this work. 
So um, where am I? Just uh, go back to the top. So just like with the Hello World example, you do a make mini config, you do a make. It's already been already been built. Make flash. So flash it to the uh, IO TUS. This is the moment of truth. Maybe. So it's flashing now. And uh, here we go. So it cleared the screen. It's got a battery in it, so hopefully a non-exploding one. And uh, if I uh, move the joystick, hopefully, yep, yep, the line went to lift, line went to the light, up and down. So that's that's drawing. So I should be able to. Uh, so this is probably really impossible for everyone to see. So there's is, is actually lines being drawn there. And if I push the button, hopefully that should clear the screen. And since uh, so, yep. Yeah. So I don't recommend. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a. Uh, I think, I think it's everyone else in the team deserves that. And uh, you can open your eyes now, Mark. I won't show any more code. <laughs> anyway, so look, that's, 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 uh, that's your IOTAS working. So I just want to give everyone some confidence that um, your, 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 your existing Arduino knowledge will get you a long way. All right, so just to finish up, uh, apparently these things do crash. Uh, or Mark has been hallucinating a lot. Um, there's a handy little command line thing called address to line. And so when, the, when you get a backtrace, you'll get a, a, a large hexadecimal number. It's a prize there for wanting to give it to me in A63. Uh, and then the output will actually tell you what, what line of source code that it failed on. So that, that particular failure happened on uh, the Adafruit graphics library. So that's, that's kind of handy to know. Uh, right, so that's, that's it for the technical part. So what now? Um, yeah, hopefully we'll organise a, a boff in the uh, next couple of days so that we can help people finish hardware, get further guidance about the hardware and the software, hopefully maybe some advanced examples. Uh, beyond this week, um, the Open Hardware Conf uh, website, hopefully we'll keep uh, improving the wiki. We'll perhaps open the wiki up so anyone, anyone can edit it um, uh, for documentation. Uh, there's a, a Google group uh, for email, so for questions, as well as just putting in GitHub issues. Um, and maybe, depending on demand, another hardware spin, ongoing workshops and so on. So hopefully we can keep this going if uh, everyone's interested. I, I know I certainly want to play with this a lot. Um, right, next, next year. Um, this is the eighth year that we've uh, collectively have, have, um, run this uh, mini-conf because I think uh, we've really enjoyed all, all of your support. It's really nice to see people build, build hardware and go and do interesting things with it. Um, Mark, Mark Merlin always, is, uh, several times has amazed us when he comes back the next year of some of the crazy things he's done with our projects. Um, so it would be nice to um, get feedback from everyone about what we did right and what was not, not so good. Um, Actually, just tell us what we did right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, but, uh, maybe sort of get some ideas for next time. Um, uh, we'll try to, um, we'd li really like to get some broader engagement, sort of uh, basically get going sooner rather than later. You've probably heard a few tales of, of uh, how, uh, how uh, uh, compressed it was this year because um, of personal and other reasons. We are all just very busy, like, like all of you. Um, uh, improve communication, try and get access to hardware prototypes, uh, get contributions and uh, you know, have people insist and join us. So it's not just, um, you know, well, it isn't that being the same people all the time, but we really like to open up a bit, I think. And, and also more diversity. I think that's uh, very important. Um, anyway, so version 9. Uh, just in case you're wondering um, what, 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 what Angus uh, has been surviving on for the last uh, few weeks. So I'd like to thank everyone. Um, Everyone who's come along today, uh, the LCA organisers have been really helpful and supportive of what we've done, uh, very patient with us not telling them how we were going, and all the volunteers, the AV guys who have been uh, uh, joined us for a few years now. Thanks very much. Um, anyone who's spoken, everyone's helped. Uh, the core team, um, who I think it's, well, I think it's already been covered a bit. Uh, there's uh, three people who um, uh, very promptly uh, supported us with um, the, the diversity ticket, which was, was great, so thank you to those people who now, I wish they were more anonymous, but I don't know. And uh, also Expressive, who uh, very kindly gave, uh, gave us the 60 modules, which um, made it all possible. I think that's it. So no time for questions. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Andy.